couple more things we're going to talk about in this video is bore coatings. Uh, some guys are asking about things like chrome lining and um, lebdium coating on the bullets and things like this. And uh, this is a good place to discuss that. Some rifles uh, have a chrome lining in the bore, which is designed to basically reduce the friction. And chrome lining also reduces the effects of the chemical erosion. And uh, it makes everything slipperier in there. So it does increase the life of your bore sometimes. But uh, what can happen is that you have loosely packed oxides sometimes get, in, get underneath some of this chrome lining where you might have a, you know, a compromise uh, of the chrome inside there. And uh, that can expand at a different rate, you know, differentially than some of that other stuff is in there. And that expansion can cause that chrome lining to kind of pop and flake off and then get torn off. And that can cause like big gouging sometimes. So uh, some guys talk about how chrome lining your barrel makes it a little bit less accurate. And that, that can be true. Uh, that's why basically you have uh, different things happening underneath the chrome lining, you know, a rapid expansion of some of those oxides. And uh, that can cause it to flake. So in a precision rifle, uh, you don't really need chrome lining. That's not going to help you. That's more developed for like a semi-auto where you're really giving it the, like a machine gun or something like that. That's what it's designed for. Um, and it's effective for uh, lengthening the barrel life of those type weapons. But for a precision rifle, I would not recommend any kind of chrome lining. Um, another thing is the molybdium coating. Mo molly coating your bullet. That's You can buy those bullets where they're like black. Or uh, sometimes you can even do Kefl uh, Teflon-coated bullets back in the day. I don't know if those are still legal or not. Some guy thought they were scary or something, so they banned them, I think, some of the Teflon-coated bullets. But uh, that basically increases the lubricity of the uh, surface of the bullet. And the idea b behind molybdenum coating is that it's kind of a lubricant. And when you shoot, the bullet is supposed to be real slippery, and then it just flies through the bore. It uh, increases your muzzle velocity and uh, still makes your pressure curve not as scary as it would have been. Um, and the idea is good, and you do, if you measure it with a, a, cr a chronograph, you will see a slight increase in muzzle velocities with molly coating. And some guys even say they experience less recoil. But there are some significant issues we need to address with uh, the molly coated bullets. What happens is, uh, here's a representation of a molly coated bullet sitting in the cartridge inside the chamber. And uh, we got it black there. Uh, and what happens is, I don't know if you guys remember where the free bore is here, but uh, there's the part where it uh, kind of the transition from the free bore into the actual rifling. That's called like a forcing cone, some guys call that. And that's where the rifling starts. Well, when they're reaming out these chambers, they got to cut away the material that the barrel's already completely rifled all the way back. And then they have a chamber reamer and they uh, cut that out. So there's a little tiny jagged edges sometimes in that forcing cone region from machining. And normally when you uh, start to break it in a rifle, the first few rounds uh, really take those uh, nasty little microscopic rugged edges off. And uh, that's uh, one of the places where a lot of throat erosion happens. That's also a place where there's a huge amount of heat that, that uh, develops. But when the, when the rifle bullet that's molly coated passes uh, through that little area, uh, some of that molybdenum kind of uh, flakes off and rubs off and it starts to deposit in that forcing cone in the crack there and uh, it can get in into some weird spots and when it experiences that 3700 degrees kelvin it like a lot of it permanently bonds in with the steel and uh it's not really coated evenly in there uh, you'll have little uh, accumulation pockets and you'll have little globules and things like that forming of the molybdenum uh, uh bonding to the steel likewise if you look down the length of the barrel, the further you go, uh, the less uh, molybdenum gets deposited. And that's for obvious reasons. You have molybdenum on the, the bullet, and uh, it's only going through and the, the lands on the rifling are uh, cutting into the bullet. They're uh, deforming the jacket, and your molybdenum is going to rub off in those zones at the beginning. But after a certain point, those contact points are going to be completely rubbed off. And so you're going to have a transition zone from the molybdenum to normal copper fouling again. And uh, it's not always even. It usually occurs in patches. And so you get uh, patches of molybdenum and patches of copper fouling 
So what happens over time is these patches of molybdenum, and that stuff is like really well bonded from the heat in there. I mean, it's like become a part of the steel lattice structure, actually, in a lot of cases. And uh, you'll have differential erosion because of the molybdenum coating will protect little island regions of the bore with molybdenum, and then the spots where the molybdenum did not coat it uh, will be subject to uh, greater erosion forces. So differential erosion really leads to uh, even more inconsistencies along the bore. And you'll have, uh, just like you do with differential erosion in geology, you'll have regions that used to be uh, low spots or pockets in the bore uh, that got filled up with molybdenum initially, and later they'll become the high spots as that zone has been protected from further erosion. So to really uh, wreak havoc on bores over the long term, now, uh, this isn't something you need to panic over if you already do use molly-coated bullets or if uh, you've used them in the past. And it only takes firing them one time to get this effect. Uh, my 243 that I uh, got in 2000, I think it was, I, I put a lot of rounds through that. And initially, when I started shooting, I did use molybdenum-coated bullets. I wasn't aware of this. And uh, later, uh, you know, there are some problems, but it still shoots very, very, very well. So it's not something you need to panic over by any means. But it's interesting to note that a lot of the custom barrel manufacturers and some of the custom rifle companies will actually void their warranties on their rifle barrels if they find out you've been using molybdenum-coated bullets. And uh, that's their primary reasoning for that. Some, some places don't really care about it, but uh, that's just interesting. It does increase the lubricity of, of uh, you know, the metals, that's for sure, but it does it in an uneven pattern which leads to differential erosion in the bore, and that's the problem. So if someone asked, do you prefer molly-coated bullets, I would say no. I just think a, a standard copper jacket's going to give you the most uniform results. Um, you don't want to be protecting areas in the bore differentially. If it was all even protection, that might be okay. And uh, what some guys do, and this is if you do like the idea of uh, a, a protective molybdenum coating, what you can do is a lot, it would be better at least is you can swab a rag with, I forget what they call it, there's a brand name, but uh, it's like a spray molybdenum coating or foam kind of stuff, and uh, you spray it in into the bore, and you saturate the entire bore, and then you get a, a, a rag or a bore patch, and you soak that in this molybdenum stuff, and you can kind of swab the bore with that. Okay. That'll actually distribute the molybdenum a lot more evenly than just by shooting molybdenum coated bullets, because all this stuff is going to rub off real close to the the beginning of the bore there. It's good, there's not going to be hardly any molybdenum left towards the end of the bore. So if you use the patch and you, you rub it through uh, before you do any shooting with your rifle, like when it's brand new, that's what some guys like to do. And that, that can fill in those micro pores again. But like I said before, you still will have differential erosion because it's usually the micro pores in the barrel that fill with the molybdenum and then the smooth reason, regions don't really uh, adhere to it as well. And once that stuff gets permanently cooked in there with the heat, you will have differential erosion over time. And that's counterproductive to what uh, the molybdenum coating was supposed to be designed for. Uh, so that's quite interesting. Okay, so now that we have a, a lot better idea of what's going on on a micro, microscopic level inside your rifle bore, you'll have a much better understanding of what's going on when we start to set up our uh, ballistics tables the way we're going to do it. Uh, so this is extremely important. If uh, I know I talked pretty fast. I'm trying to get this all in in a reasonable amount of time because there's just so much here and we need to move on. There's so much stuff we still have to cover. But uh, it's it, this, this particular video is quite important. So you want to make sure you understand all these concepts um, or at least understand the general ideas. You don't have to memorize any of the chemistry or anything like that, but the concepts is very important. We're going to set up our charts. They're going to be uh, basically muzzle velocity flexible because as you're starting to learn here, all these different variables we're talking about can tremendously affect your point of impact by either bore access shifts or by muzzle velocity changes. And this is all internal ballistics. So all these different variations in what's going on uh, have a big effect on all these things. And so when we're setting up our uh, ballistics charts, you'll understand why. And also when we uh, start to set up our uh, maintenance regime for our long range weapon systems and how to properly uh, employ them in the field and when and when not to clean them, 
that will make sense now that you're starting to understand these processes. So uh, on the next video, we're going to get into some more of the projectile and bore relationships. This one was just primarily talking about erosion, but we will get into next here. Uh, we're going to talk in, in more detail about fouling, like gunpowder fouling and how that can affect things, and uh, coppering, that's the de deposition of copper from the jacket of the bullet, obviously, and then uh, bore temperature and projectile temperature. And uh, all these different things not only affect the muzzle velocity as they vary in the bore, these different bore conditions, but as you change the muzzle velocity, you're also changing your pressure curve, which throws off your harmonics, which changes the axis of your bore at the time the bullet exits the muzzle, which leads to a point of impact change. So we're going to have to keep all this stuff as consistent as possible. Hey. That's the cure. Uh, muzzle velocity changes. We're actually going to have to uh, account for those mathematically. But these other internal ballistics changes that deal with harmonics and bore access shifts, we're going to cure that problem by establishing certain control conditions in our long-range rifle system. And by control conditions, I mean you're going to want to keep things as constant as possible. And so that will come into play when we talk about how we're going to uh, clean our bores. So that's the basic heart and message of this video. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. Stay tuned. <laughs>